How many of us know that it's good to have reciprocal love? Love that comes back to us like we give it out. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that we can't love him as much as he loves us. Hallelujah, because we can't die for him. He died for us. We can die in him. We can die to self. We can't die for God. Amen. 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 We bless God for this opportunity. Denisha, can you just take a little bit off the mic? Thank you. Amen. We bless God for this opportunity to uh, preach again and to come before you behind this sacred desk. We bless God for our pastor and her absence, Pastor Monica Marie Lowe Howard. We thank her. Thank you, Pastor, um, for another opportunity to come before you all. I take it not lightly. I take it as a serious thing to be able to break bread with you, break the word of life with you. And uh, God knows that she's very generous as a pastor to uh, allow for me to come before you all and to include me even in some other situations, Sunday schools and Bible studies and all the other teachings. And I'm just grateful that I have, we have that kind of pastor. Y'all know I call her mother. I have that kind of mother that loves me and uh, listens to the Spirit of God when he tells her to do things. Amen. 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 How many of us know it's good to listen to the Lord? Yes. Yeah. And to hear from him. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, um, Lord, I'm available to you. You never heard it. You never heard it before. Amen. Amen. There's a song that um, I like to hear and like to sing sometimes. Uh, I'm not going to sing it. Mm -hmm. But it's, Lord, I'm available to you. It says, it gave me my hands, it gave me my ears, it gave me my tongue. It just talks about the things that he's yes. given us. Yes. And he gave it to us for him to use. And so today, I'm asking him to certainly use everything that he's given to me to bring this word to you all. Let us pray. Father God, we are here gathered in your name, ready to worship and to praise you through the preaching and listening of your word, God. Help, Lord Jesus, right now. Help Holy Ghost to do the teaching and the preaching. God, I am nothing without you. And in you, Christ Jesus, your word tells me I can do everything. Now be in my voice, be in my heart, be in my speak, be in this uh, word that's going forth to your people, God. Let shame move. And let now, Holy Spirit, you arise. Use me, Lord. I am available to you. Lord, let this word that we're about to receive be nourishment for our spirit, mind, body, and soul, that it may be used for the upkeeping of our systems, our selves, God, and that we will share it with others so that they will know thus what thus said the Lord. It is in Jesus' name we now pray. Amen. Amen. We had some of the scripture read to us today. Um, we're actually going to be touching on the entire story of Lazarus from the beginning to the end. And so I did not think it was proper to have anyone read verses 1 through 44. But since you all are sitting here, I'm going to, no, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to read every verse. But we will touch about this man named Lazarus, the story of Lazarus. Because you know what? It's interesting because in every one of our lives, now if this does not apply to you, you can leave. I promise you I'm going to give everybody an out. So if it don't apply to you, you know, have a good day. But I'm pretty sure that everybody in here has had some disappointments. Yes. Yes. Anybody who hasn't had disappointments? Everybody who's had disappointments, raise your hand. Yes. Amen. Yes. I'm pretty sure that there's been some setbacks. There's been some situations that we find ourselves in in life that have not been to the positive in our mindset. I'm pretty sure that there was somebody who had a loved one let them down or even had a loved one uh, pass away. I'm pretty sure that there was a boyfriend or a girlfriend who broke your heart that you just thought you was not going to be able to get past it. I'm pretty sure there was a test that you took that you studied 
very, very hard and very diligently for, that you actually took the time to study for, and yet you still got a disappointing grade. I'm pretty sure that there was some time standing in front of our mamas or our daddies, and we were trying to spell them words that we know we went over a hundred times. And yet, still, when we got in front of them, we couldn't get A out of B and B out of C. I know there's been some times that we've had some disappointments. We saw a pretty girl or a nice-looking guy, and we thought we had all our words together. And we go up to him, and when we get there, we get all mumble mouth. We couldn't get a word out edgewise. We were so disappointed with ourselves. I'm pretty sure that we've had some tragedies happen, some accidents, some things that we did not intend for them to happen, but it happened. There's been some things that we've done, some decisions that we've made that we thought we were on top of the world and found out that the world was really crumbling underneath of us. How many of us do we have here that has, has experienced some sort of disappointment? Yes, hallelujah. We've had some situations that have arised in our lives that we just could not believe that that the lawyer or the doctor or the husband was trying to tell us we just could not get over could not imagine that this was what was going to be said to us that this is what was happening to us that we were in the midst of this situation how did we get here we might have asked ourselves so today we're going to talk about how do we get past how do we deal with disappointments how do we deal with difficult situations are y'all with me Amen. and so and so we, we 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 bless god today the holy spirit because he gave me the point without the scripture. So I've been walking around for, for a few weeks now, actually almost two months with the point, but I didn't know what scripture he wanted me to relate it to. And so as I laid across my bed, and I said, Lord, I, I don't know, I, I just don't know what it is you want me to say to your people. Do you want me to do this or do that? Of this, and he and the Holy Spirit, as he is, said, Listen, I want you to do that scripture and use those points. I said, Oh, okay. <laughs> and so we bless God today that he's going to show us how we can deal with some difficult situations through the life of Lazarus, okay? And in chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and his sister, and her sister, Martha. It's interesting that John, when he referred to the town of Bethany, that he used Lazarus as a byproduct. Now, how many of us know the actual story? We know how it ends. Anybody here knows how the story of Lazarus ends? Yeah. Anybody that doesn't know how the story ends? Well, stay tuned. Okay, and so, and so, and so, it's interesting that he would address this city and, and, and relate it to Mary and Martha, even though the biggest miracle comparative to what happened with Mary and Martha would have been Lazarus. Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. And so it's not identified with the male or the man, which in most cases in the Jewish tradition and even in some of our traditions, we want to relate everything to the man, but, but it, it's, it's, it's imperative that we understand that the Bible were identifying the women as the strong point of this city. Are y'all with me? And it says, it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. And it says, therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou loveth is sick. And what we can take from that is, is we can see that we have a God that loves us. Yes. He has compassion. He has feelings towards us. Are y'all with me? Yes. He, he's the kind of God that actually is not just sitting there being all mean and judgmental, but that he actually has love yes. for every one of his children. And it says, Lord, that, 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 that he's sick. He, 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 he pretty sick if, if, if they send in word to Jesus who's not there. And when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, 
but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now, Jesus loved Martha, his sister, and Lazarus. And so he told his disciples, now, now look, he, he said here, and when he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. I got tickled when I read that. How many of us feel like sometimes God don't come when we want him to come? <laughs> Oh, come on now. I, I, I pretty much figured that everybody up in here ought to admit that sometimes we feel like God don't show up when we want him to show up. We always feel like, come on now, Lord. Now, now, now you see me down here struggling. That's struggling. Struggling. You see me down here in turmoil. You see me down here having to deal with this difficult situation. And yet and still, the Bible says Jesus tarried. Two more days where he was. Imagine that. Mary and Martha took the time to, now, you know, it wasn't no telegrams back then. It wasn't no cell phones. They didn't have the internet. They didn't have a, 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 a pigeon, a carrier pigeon. They had nothing to be able to send a message to somebody but somebody else's two feet. And if they were rich or had some importance, they may have had a, a horse that could ride and tell the message. And so they had to send somebody with the message to say, listen, Lazarus is sick, and he's so sick that we send it for you. And the Bible says that Jesus said, listen here, I'm going to stay two more days right where I am. I'm going to take my time getting back over to the situation. Now, we must remember what Jesus said here in verse 4. This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified thereby. thereby. Are y'all with me? Yes. So keep that in mind. I want y'all to, to, to note that. Check it off, okay? He said the sickness is not unto death. And then he goes on and tells the disciples, listen, we're going to go over there. We're going to go back to Judea. And see, what was interesting about him going back to Judea was the fact that they were actually seeking to kill him in Judea. And the disciples was like, look okay, here, you show. You want to go back to Judea? Because um, they're looking to kill you back over there. Why, why would you want to go back why would you risk yourself for somebody who's sick? And he said, listen, let me explain something to you. Ain't it 12 hours in a day? 12 hours is light. And people need to see. Because it's light outside. Nobody stumbles when it's light outside. He said, but there's 12 hours that's dark. And when they're in the darkness, men tend to stumble. And so he says unto them, he says in verse 11, these things he said he, and after that he said unto them, our friend Lazarus sleep, but I go that I may awake him out of his sleep. And the disciples just could not get it. They say, Lord, if he just sleep, we ain't gonna wake up himself. <laughs> if he just sleep, won't he do well to just wake up by himself. And so Jesus had to tell him, listen, he's plain and simple. Listen, Lazarus is dead. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. Lazarus is dead. Now I know they think it like I was thinking when I read it. They probably said, hold on here, back four verses ago, back in verse four, you said he wasn't going to die. What, what, is you confused? Is he asleep? Is he not dead? Is he dead? Come on now, Jesus. What you really trying to tell me here? What is it that you're trying to say? And sometimes we, like the disciples, just can't get it right. God is still speaking to us. But we tend to, because of our arrogance or our ignorance or our stubbornness or our, or our desires and our own personal wills, we tend to not hear what God is trying to tell us. We tend to just let the message Flow over our head. Well, he might, you can't be saying what I think he's saying. He can't really be telling me to leave my job. 
He, he really can't be telling me that it's time for me to get a job. He can't be telling me that it's time for me to get married or it's time for me to, to, to pursue a, a, a teaching career or it's time for me to do those things that has been in my heart. But I just can't get past where I am right now. And so the disciples like us were stuck. They, they was like, come on now. Why is it that you're so, so animate about going back to the place that you know that they're trying to kill you so that you can wake somebody up that going to wake up? If he's asleep, he's going to wake up. And so Jesus had to plainly tell them, listen, Lazarus is dead. And read verse 15 with me. What did he say here? Stop right there. And I'm glad for whose sake? Your that what? What was the reason? To the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go on to him. So Jesus is saying, it is not stay two days longer because I was waiting for him to die. Hold on, Shay. That's going against all my theology that I learned. And so you mean to tell me that Jesus actually let him die? According to the word of God, he did. He could have rushed back over there. He could have, he could have hauled tail down there and harried up and got there. And because he's God, he could have just spoke from where he was. Because we know in the word of God that Jesus spoke to the centurion's uh, uh, situation. And, and right where he was, he said, listen, you ain't got to come over and heal my servant. You, because I have servants under me. I can speak and they will go and do this and I can speak and some others will go and do that. He said, so I know all you got to do is speak a word and right where you are, the healing can happen. And yet Jesus said, listen, I'm going to go for your sakes. I'm going to go see about my friend Lashley. Verse 17 goes on and talks about them getting there. And then when Jesus came, he found that he had linen in the grave four days. He had laid in the grave four days already. So Lazarus was dead dead. He was dead dead. And 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 and, and, and to, to understand this a little better, can you imagine how Martha and Mary was feeling when they realized that Lazarus was sick. And it's like us. And this is the, really the first point. They took the hit. You know how when you get some bad news, when, when the doctor tells you that it, that it is cancer, or that the doctor tells you that you're going to have to have surgery, or that, or that, or that, you, that nephew or niece tell you that, that they found mama this morning, she was in bed, she wasn't able to wake up, that hit you get. That initial shock, that feeling you have in the pit of your stomach, that something is so wrong and there's nothing I can do about it. It's, it's that initial hit, that punch in the gut, as they would call it. And I can imagine that that's how Mary and Martha must have felt when they first sent for Jesus. They took that hit. But in the hit, they responded correctly. They sent for the Lord. That's what we're supposed to do. When we get that initial hit, we, we send for the Lord. And so now the Lord is here, and, 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 and Lazarus is dead dead. He's been in the grave how many days? Oh. Already in his burial clothes, all wrapped up and tied up with all of the, all of the flowers and the different things that they put in it so that he won't have a, a, a stench coming from the grave because, you know, they didn't have a bombing fluid and all of the stuff that we have. They had to use perfumes and different types of fragrances to, to keep the body from smelling, smelling, smelling. And so, thank you. And so, Jesus had arrived to the grave. And when he got there, to the area where the grave was, he had seen that he had been dead for days. And the Bible says that Mary and Martha, they were in the house, and because Jerusalem was nearby Bethany, where they stayed, it wasn't but a couple of miles, about two, three miles, all the Jews from Jerusalem had come over to console them. So in the time that it took Jesus to get back down to Bethany, 
Everybody from all the neighborhoods from all over had come by to do the, the, the ritual of mourning with Mary and Martha. And, and that is point two, the hurt. The hurt. It hurts. It hurts when we get disappointing news. It hurts when we got to have surgeries. It hurts when we got to, uh, 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 when we lose loved ones. It hurts when we lose jobs. It hurts when our marriages don't go the way that we want them to go. And, and, and you got, and, and you go through uh, divorce or that you have to go through uh, separation via death. It hurts. It hurts when you get sued for something that you didn't really mean to do. It was an accident. It hurts. When the doctor says that we got high blood pressure and cholesterol and we got to change our diets, it hurts. It hurts. It hurts when we have to sit there and see loved ones be stubborn and don't want to yield to the word and the will of God. It hurts when we sit there and see those that we had in high esteem act like idiots and fools. It hurts. The Bible says it hurts when our mothers and fathers forsake us. But it also says that then the Lord will take us up. And so here we have Martha and Mary dealing with the hurt of their brother Lazarus being dead. And you can imagine what they must have said to Jesus. I can imagine that they had a few words that they wanted to say to him. Now we sent for you. We know where you were because we found you. And the servant, the, the person, the man or woman that we sent to tell you the message came back and said, I told him, he knows. And yet, why did it take you two more days to get here? I can imagine that they had a feeling of some kind of, they felt some kind of way. They felt, they felt hey, listen here, you know, we, we recognize who you are, but you know what, you could have done a whole lot better with yourself. Even though I know you God and everything, you could have done better. How dare you, God? Treat us like this. After all, we love you. After all, you tell everybody how much you love us. And you're going to treat us like this. Verse 21 says, Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. Lord, if you was just here, if you would have been, if you would have been here, he wouldn't have died. She says, but I know, and, and, and we get this way too sometimes. We, 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 we want to be so churchy. We want to we want to say the right things. We want to say those things. Oh God, but you know God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. We want to say those things that are so churchy. That, that, but for real in our hearts, we feel in one sort of way. But we want to say those things because after all, it's the proper thing to say to God. You know, I, I got to come correct when I talk to him. I, I don't really want to tell him what I feel and how I'm feeling and what I want to say to him. Because, you know, I got to remember he can kill me any time. <laughs> he can like just take me out. He can strike me down. Or he can make me, you know, be like Nebuchadnezzar and I can go out and have to eat grass for seven years. You know, he can do what he wants to with me. You know, I, I know that he made a donkey talk, so he might make me sound like a donkey. So I don't know. I might want to watch how I speak to God. Are y'all with me? I was just making sure y'all were still with me. So she says in verse 22, but I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. And, and, and that sounds real good. That sounds like a lot of faith, don't it? Oh, she got big faith. So Jesus challenges her on her faith. He said, listen here. Thy brother shall rise again. Plain and simple. Yeah. Thy brother, oh, he getting up. She said, well, yeah, I know in the days of, you know, the resurrection, all of those that die and you're going to get up. He said, listen, see, I knew you was just talking churchy stuff. Because if you understood who I really was, then you would understand what I'm saying right now. Listen, brothers and sisters, children of God, we got to really understand who God is so that we can understand what God is saying. We need to stop putting God in these boxes 
that we want to place him in and make him in these containers stacked nice and neatly like we do our Tupperware in our, in our cabinets. And we want to put God in these certain places. Well, God, you can deal with my, with my marriage and God, you can deal with my job. But please, God, stay out of my finances in my bedroom. Please, God, you can deal with, with, my, with my, uh, uh, my, my family and, and some of my friends, not all of them, because, you know, I still like them friends to tell the dirty joke and watch the dirty movies. And, and, and I don't want you to mess with them. And God, please, oh God, please don't mess with my magazines. Please, God, don't make me have to get those up. Because you know I like still magazines. And God, please, please, God, please, God, let the preacher be done so I can make sure I see them skins, them ravens, them eagles. Got to get home so I can be able to see my boys play. Amen. 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 And so we want to put God in these containers. We want to put God in these in, 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 in these places. But but Jesus breaks through her whole theology. He breaks up her whole train of, 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 of thought. He, he breaks through all of that that she believed that she knew about God and about who he was. He says unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this? So he makes a declaration and says, listen here, you got to know who I am. If you knew who I really am, then you wouldn't have any worries. You wouldn't even have any concerns or care about what looked like a dead situation. I, I, I believe that when they took some of our jobs away, we thought it was a dead situation. We thought that there's absolutely no way in the world, I'm gonna get back at that job. I know that when 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 we lost apartments and houses and, and and our credit was less than zero, many of us said, "Ain't no way I'm gonna be able to rent another apartment or get another house or or get another car." But yet, here we stand today as witnesses that God is the repair, God is the resurrection, and so He can make those things that seem dead. If you commit it in him and you put it in him, as the word that we read earlier today said, if my word abide in you and you abide in me, you can ask what you will and it will be given unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so and so he asked her, do you know who I am? Do you believe what I'm telling you? If you believe what I'm telling you, then watch what I'm about to do. And so the Bible goes on to tell us that Jesus, that smelt, that Mary went to get, uh, Martha went to get Mary, and when he saw Mary, when she came out, it says here that everybody followed her because she got up so fast, she got up so quickly that they thought she was running out to the grave site to. To, to, to mourn some more. And you know, like I said, because of the tradition, they ain't want her to have to mourn by herself. They ain't want to have to go through it by herself. And you know what? It's good to have some folks that are, that are willing to mourn with you. There are some, that you got some folks around you that's willing to go through some situations with you. But how many of us know that they really can't feel what we feel? And how many of us really, they really don't know what we're going through? And, and, and for real, one of the things we hate the most to hear somebody say when we're going through our situation, oh, I know how you feel. No, you don't. No, you don't. The devil is a lie. That's what you want to tell them. You don't know how I feel, because if you knew how I feel, then you would help me take this feeling away from me. You can't feel my pain. You might have went through the exact situation, but you don't know how I'm feeling about the situation. And so, and so, and so, they all wanted to go with Mary to, to help her out, to help her mourn, because she was in the middle of her hurt. She took the hit, and now she's dealing with the hurt. And I, I would believe that the hurt was even more grievous to her because now she knows Jesus is here. And she, like her sister, her sister was a little more bold with speaking things. 
We saw that earlier when, when she was in the kitchen working and Mary was at the Satan's feet listening and learning what Jesus was talking about. And Mark said, come on, Jesus. Now you see me in here doing all this work. And, 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 Ma, and Mary is sitting at your feet. Won't you make her get up and come help me in this kitchen so that y'all can eat? And he said that, that he said, Martha, Martha. He called her praying, Martha, Martha. That means it's important. <laughs> or maybe they think you're being foolish. But he said, Martha, Martha, listen, there's only one thing that is needed. And Mary has chosen the good part. And so, and so, and so we know that Martha wasn't afraid to say what she felt, what was on her mind. But it says that Mary came, and when Mary got there, it says in verse 32, that when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. And when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, hmm, crying, dealing with the hurt, getting the hurt, the hurt is, is anticipating, and it's and it's and it's and it's and it's and it's it's a sad scene, a sad situation. And the Jews also weeping with that came with her is weeping. It, the Bible says that it moved him to compassion. It says he groaned in the spirit. And what? This proves to us, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, that Jesus was in fact human. Although he's God, because only God can determine whether Lazarus was going to be dead or not, right? Are y'all with me? Who controls life and death? God. God. All right. And so Jesus said, remember I told y'all to bookmark something? Verse 4, what did he say? What did he say back in verse 4? Come on, y'all ain't got to look at it. What did he say? Y'all can paraphrase. What did he say? You ain't got to tell me exactly what he said. What did he say? He not going to what? Lazarus ain't going to what? And yet, here Lazarus is in the grave. What? Dead. Four days dead. And so he was troubled. It troubled the human side of him. God has compassion for us, y'all. We have. We serve a God. See, uh, uh, hallelujah. I wish we could understand that these are really the shouting moments. Mm. Far too often we shout because somebody says, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Yeah. Give God the glory, hallelujah. Yeah. Let's give him a praise, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But when we find out that we serve a God that has compassion, that man should make us all run around the building. We ought to know that if we serve a God that has compassion, we serve a God that has passion, that means he loves us beyond the mindset. He loves us to the depths of his very spirit. It tells us that he was shaken in his core. He was troubled that this scene, that this situation was so much that it made him feel some sort of way. It made him feel like he couldn't deal with it that he had to groan mm, mm, in his spirit. We got a God that loves us. He cares about us. He don't want to see us hurting. He doesn't want to see us in pain. He does. Listen, God does not desire to see us in pain. God does not desire for us to hurt. But it happens. We got loved ones that are stubborn and don't want to listen. It happens. We lose stuff. We lose loved ones that we don't want to lose. It happens. God doesn't want us to hurt, but hurt happens. And so he's moved to compassion. And he says to them, where have you laid him? Show me where he is. Show me where my friend is. I, I can imagine that it's starting to hit him. That's my man. That's my boy laying in there. But, so, but come on, y'all. I'm getting. I, I'm getting to the point that I, I, I really need to do what I got to do because because this scene is just too sad for me. It, it, it's bothering me. And, and, and you ever had a situation that that you were trying to be strong for other folks, and you was trying to be the the rock, and you're trying to be the backbone, and the fellas are like, tough it up, fella. Come on, boy, you can make it. Tough it up. Don't cry. Don't cry. Don't cry. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can make it. You gotta be strong. You gotta be strong for your family. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. That's foolishness. 
Why is it foolishness? Let's read what happened in verse 35. I know Robin, I know Robin, Nicole, Edwards, what's her last name, man? Bree knows this verse very well. Because she said this verse every time they had, I understand when they had to say grace, they had to say a verse of scripture. And so Robin went and found this verse of scripture so that she wouldn't have to say it for so long. What does it say in verse 35? Jesus. Show this verse of scripture in the Bible. And so the Bible in these two words tells us so much that he was moved so far, he was moved so much in his compassion that as he was going, as he was getting closer to the grave, he began to just cry. Boo him. It didn't say he sniffled. Ugh. It didn't say he sniffled and groaned and, and pounded his chest. Yeah, I'm a man. It says that the very man, the very one that is the very image of God, the one that is the second Adam, the one that we should all try to be like, the one that we should be trying to live in, it says that he what? So please, by all means, let's get over this once and for all for the last time. Stop trying to be something that even God wasn't. Amen. Whoa. He really just say that, yes. And then it went on to say that they took him to the grave. And he said, listen, get the, get the stone out the way. Move, move the stone. Move the stone. Get it out the way. <laughs> but they said unto him, let's read verse 39, because here go Martha again. Read verse 39, and then we're going to read verse 40. Read 39. We're going to wait a few minutes, a few seconds so it can sink in, and then I'll tell you when to read verse 40. Y'all ready? Begin. Jesus said, take me away the stone. Hold on, hold time out, time out. Pastor taught us now that there's punctuations for a reason. Let's try it again. Jesus said, take me away the stone. My the sister of the man of the city, said unto him, Lord, can y'all imagine how she said it though? So y'all read that, but I won't I won't get it to you like, ah, oh, don't do that. Oh Lord no. Don't do that. He stink. Can you imagine God just challenged her earlier about how she had put him in a compartment and into a box? And yet now he's speaking again, take the stone away. What do you think she was thinking that he wanted to do? Just to see him. You know, you know, you know the thing that tear up a funeral, the quickest and the easiest and, and the worstest thing, the worst thing, the, the most baddest. I know all those words are all right. The worst sir, sir, thing to do. The worst thing you can do once they have closed that casket is to fool with somebody who came in late that want to see grandmama. I want to see my auntie one last time, and you crack that casket back open and let everybody's hurt have to come back. Particularly after the preacher has already given the eulogy. He didn't help the family, he didn't gave the word, and then you want to some, let some heathen that's late coming into the church who ain't going to come back to the church. No more, and ain't gonna go to the gravesite to see grandma or or auntie or, or, or any of those people come in and, and ruin everything that has already happened. Martha said, uh-uh, he stink. Don't open that, please. Just to see him? You just told me you the resurrection, you're gonna see him in the in the last day. Why you gotta see him now? <laughs> Again, she was putting him in the box. If he just told her that you're going to see your brother again, isn't that what he told her? Mm -hmm. You're going to see him again? That brother shall rise again? Yes. Don't you think he could have done something about the stink too? Yes. See, I'm, see, I'm messing with y'all. I'm messing with y'all, man. Y'all not getting this. <laughs> Stop putting God in a box. In other words, Jesus know what he's doing. So he told them to Move the stone. 
And after they had moved the stone from the place where it was, it says that Jesus lifted up his eyes to his father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And he said, Father, I thank thee. Imagine that. Here's the same man who was just crying and weeping and groaning and moaning and hearing everybody else whining and, cr and crying and weeping and moaning and groaning and, 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 and complaining and saying, why couldn't you have done something? Here he says, he starts off by saying, Father, I thank you. That thou hast heard me. Father, I thank thee that thou hast what? Heard, heard me. Heard is a past tense word. He didn't say, Father, I thank you that you hear me. He said, Father, I thank you that you heard me. And I know that thou hearest me always. But because of these people which stand up by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. What was it that he said? What was it that the father had heard that Jesus is referring to here? Because, think about it, y'all. The only person he told that you was going to see your brother again was who? Martha. It didn't say Martha had to cry. I said Mary had to cry, right? Mm -hmm. Did he ever tell Mary? Did, when we read, did y'all ever see him say to Mary, come on, Mary, you're going to get up. You're going to see him. All he said to Mary was, where y'all laying at? Where is he? What tomb is he in? Where, where, where is his plot? Are y'all with me? Yeah. Uh, I hope this is exciting y'all like it is me. Yeah. It, yeah. What we see here is that he's now declaring, listen, Father, I'm glad that you heard me. Well, what is it that he heard? And that these folks that you got around me, these folks that are here that I'm speaking about, heard me say it. So that you can get the glory and that and that they will know and believe that you sent me. Who was he talking about? What was he talking about? Check your bookmark. I'm going to give you a hint. Check your bookmark. What was it that he said? Where's the bookmark? What did he say at the bookmark? I don't want y'all to look. I want y'all to remember. Okay, y'all can speak. Don't be afraid. I promise you I won't come and hit anybody or fight anybody. No, that's not what he said. That was to Martha. What did he say that people were around that he said, the bookmark, I told y'all to check it. It's real simple. You ain't got to paraphrase. You can paraphrase it. Anybody, anybody. They ain't not going to die. Did y'all forget that part already? No. That's number four. Verse four, the bookmark. I told you verse, I told y'all the bookmark. Verse four, that he's not going to die. He says to the Father, I thank you that you had me to say it. I thank you that you heard me when I said it because those that are with me, I need them to believe in me. These the same fellas that's been hanging with them. Think about that. If we translate that to nowadays, them the folk that keep coming to church all the time. And yet, Jesus knew what their heart situation was. That they still had doubt. That they still ain't believe that Jesus was really Jesus and that he was in control of things. They had some, they had some, they had some, some wavering spirits. And yet they hung with Jesus every day. They talked with him and, and they walked with him. And, and when he sat down to eat, they sat down to eat. And when he sat down to go to sleep, they sat laid down to go to sleep. But Jesus has to say, here, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou heareth me always. But because of these people, would stand by, I said it. The ones that was around me, I had to say it because they was here with me. I had to say it. And then he had to turn around and listen here. Lazarus is sleep. Well, if he's sleep, he's going to wake up, ain't he? You don't want to go back to Judea. They're trying to kill you. Listen, I got to go back because there's some darkness over there right now. And so I need to be the light that is the 12 hours of light that he was speaking about. He said, listen, the time is going to get short on us. And I'm not going to be around here all the time. So you all got to understand and, and know that I am the light. So that men won't stumble in the dark. So that they won't think that this is it. They will understand that I am who I say that I am. That I am able to do every single thing that I said I was able to do. Are y'all with me? And it says here that they were dealing with the head. They had 
began to deal with the hurt. And so now here comes the help. Jesus in verse 43 says, And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. The Bible goes on and says, And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. <laughs> he who was dead those situations that was stinking dead those things that was 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 getting ready to be eaten by moths and maggots those things that the canker worms and the palmer worms had destroyed the bible says that the very resurrection in the life came and spoke into his life and even though he had been buried four days he called him forth are y'all with me? Yes. Amen. Jesus has that kind of ability. Yes. He went to the grave and rose Lazarus from the dead. So for those who don't know the story of what happened to Lazarus, he got up. Yes. Matter of fact, in the next chapter, he's going to be eating chicken with Jesus. They're going to have a party at Lazarus' house by the time the next chapter start up, which, you know, 11 he was dead, 12 he up eating. Imagine that. And, 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 and when you look, if you y'all know how in the back of your Bibles, this this is almost a side note, but you know in the back of your Bibles you got those little maps mm -hmm. and everything yeah. um, to show you the cities and the towns and everything. Yeah. And if not, you can look on the internet. What was interesting was that Bethany was a hilly city, mm -hmm. and so I imagine that the graves were somewhere off in the hills because tombs back in those days they didn't put you in the ground. They put you in the side of a mountain, side of a cliff, and put a rock over the top of them. Y'all do know that, right? They ain't have what we have, all the stuff we have now. And so it was a hilly place. And so, and so I'm assuming he was out on the hill calling for Lazarus to be raised. And, and, and this is certainly a great miracle. This was certainly a great thing that happened. And that's why I said it was surprising that it would be mentioned that Lazarus that the city was known by Mary and Martha and not Lazarus, because Lazarus was the one who was the big miracle. You would think that they would say, you know, where that dude that was dead at is now alive? That's where Jesus did this miracle. But he said, now Mary and Martha's city, you know, the sisters that had compassion and love and was willing to have conversation with Jesus and be real with Jesus and be upfront with Jesus and, and, and that he loved them like brothers and sisters. That's the city that they speak of. This place called Bethany, a place, like I said, that was a hill, that was a hilly land. But how many of us know that that wasn't the greatest miracle that he did on a hill? Because on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. And, and, and on that old rugged cross, the Bible tells me that he, he, he bled, suffered, bled, and died. And, and, and it tells me that, 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 that the blood came streaming down. And when it came streaming down, it came streaming down for you and for me. And, and guess what? This same blood covers us today. It's that same blood that we can rely on. It's that same blood that we can understand that he completes it all. There's nothing lost in him. There's never a loss in our God. Even though we are feeling some sort of way, even though we believe that God has forgotten about us, even though we believe that there is a chance that he's going to be late. How many of us know that what he did on a hill called Calvary, what he did for us, that he, that he died for us. And he not only died for us, but the Bible says that he was buried for us. And when he was buried for us, he stayed in the grave all night Friday. And he stayed in the grave all day Saturday. And he stayed in the grave all night Saturday. And you know, everybody thought that his situation wasn't going to be like last week. They thought that he wasn't going to get up. But I'm here to tell you today, the early on Sunday morning, right and early, the Bible says that the rock, just like the brothers and sisters, and rolled it away for Lazarus, the Bible says that an angel came down and pushed the rock to the side. And our Savior got up from the grave. And when he got up, the Bible teaches us that he had all power in his hands. And so we serve a Savior that not only died, 
he not only was buried, but he rose again. And so that's why he could declare today that I am the resurrection and the light. I am the resurrection and the life. No man that liveth in me shall die. So stop thinking that those dreams that you had were that, that may be deferred, that they won't come to pass. Stop thinking that just because it didn't happen the first time, that God can't do it again. This book is full of God's testimonies of miracles and his testimonies of deliverance and his testimonies of him doing the impossible, making it possible. If we don't study it, we won't know it. And if we don't study it, it won't apply to our lives. But when we apply this very word that God has given to us, we'll see that there's situations in our lives, the situations that we have to deal with that's already in here. It might not spell out your name and your exact location of what's going on, but somebody been through it. Somebody been through cheating, being an adulterer. Somebody been through being a murderer. Somebody been through being a punk and scared and, 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 and running away from what was the truth. There's somebody that was in the Bible that's been in a situation that you've been in, that's been hurt, that took the hit. But guess what? They looked to the hills from which cometh their help because they knew that their help came from who? From the Lord. We bless God today for his word. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you today for the life and the story of Lazarus. We thank you today, Holy Spirit, that you showed us that we can take, we, we, we're going to get the hit. It may last for a few days, or it may last for a few minutes, but God, the hit is nothing compared to the hurt. God, we lose sometimes. There's some things that happen in our lives that we don't want to happen. We have to deal with the hurt. But God, you said in your word today, hallelujah, that though we may weep, and weeping may endure for the night. But you said in your word that joy cometh in the morning. And so we thank you for being our joy. Hallelujah. We thank you for being our help. We can declare like David declared that, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. And then in the conclusion of that matter, he said, When I look back over my life, when I look behind me, I see that, Grace and mercy, I see that goodness and mercy are following me all the days of my life and that I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And so help us today, God, that when we're dealing with the hit, when we're dealing with the hurt, that we can rest and be assured that the help has come. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for it all. And it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And amen. Amen.